Hello and welcome to Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the national dailies, the headlines, and make sense of it. We try as much as we can, but of course, I encourage you to get copies uh, for detailed uh, analysis. So with me to do so this morning is um, Reputation Manager, <laughs> Tubosu Akeju. I can't forget it, we know. <laughs> and of course, um, Political Analyst, also Femi, Dr. Femi Idowu Adegoki. Good morning. Nice to see you all decked in suits this morning. Thanks for having us. Okay, so let's do this. We have um, we have the nation. We have Tribune today. Okay, Nigerian Tribune, and have this day, um, and then we have the Vanguard. But I'm going to begin with the, the nation newspaper. It would be displayed, and um, there are so many things popping out this morning. But let's begin from the front page of the nation newspaper. Already displayed. Thank you so very much. And it says on the top page there, Senator gets threat over hate speech bill. No going back. That's on page 40. Okay. Uh, lion in Lagos home tamed, sent to zoo, owner to face the law. You wonder why there's a lion even in a residential apartment. That's on page 6. And the Nigerians have punished Saraki and others. Defection wrong. That's according to Oshomole on page 8. And uh, inside, Mackinde kickstarts re-awarded money. What? Money. Money I say road. I hope that's the right pronunciation. <laughs> money I say. Oh, okay, <laughs> money I say. Okay, thank yeah. you. And that's on page forty. Thank you, uh, Tubosu. And then presidency attacks PDP for denouncing elections. APC to Leon Bello, you must perform. Jonathan sets agenda for Leon. And that's it on the front page there. Malabu oil block, Interpol gets charges against Adoke, ex AGS lawyer, writes Malami. And that's it on the front page there, but it's continued on page eight. And then Lautech lecturers begin strike. That's on page 41. Tension in Ekiti Varsity over SAC rumor, and that one is on page 41. So where do we begin this morning, um, Tubosu and Dr. Fermi? Um, so I think that uh, we've talked so much about the elections yeah, um, in Kogi and Bayosa. Bayosa. But I just think that something is very important. When APC says to Leon and Belo, you must perform, mm -hmm. Let's leave Leon out of this his first time. Belo, are you saying that Belo didn't perform in the first time? Mm -hmm. And if he didn't perform in the first time, if you know you agree uh, to the fact that he did not do very well the first time, why are you rewarding him with a second time? Mm -hmm. If you think he didn't do well, or is it that you know there were issues that we don't know about? You know, I really, really think that we need to move our politics from one that is just of favoritism or selection to one that is performance-based, that mm -hmm. people are being rewarded for be performing. And people know that if they don't perform, you know, there won't be any reward for non-performance. You know, that having said that, the mm -hmm. violence that merged, you know, the whole election, in, especially in Kogi, is one thing that we really, really need to go back and look at how we must run our election without so much violence. Some of the I look videos, forward to that Nigeria. Some, some of the videos I saw, I think that in the next, in 2023, we're going to see the impact of seeing things like that because mm. it's, it was really, really, really scary. You know, I must say that. All right. Well, I, I agree with all he said. I just started with that side. <laughs> yeah. Election again. Know. We are here again. This I, kind of conversation. I, yeah, I just want to say that mm -hmm. um, the two elections that took place over the weekend, that's the Bayosa and uh, Kogi State. State. It just shows us how we've come back, like Square 30 one. years behind. That's a, that's, in 2019, that's a shame. in 2019, we have election where guns by hoodlums and thugs. Ballot and, snatching. Yeah, even if some of the videos you saw the security outfits, the police and the army running for their life because it is said that they're not supposed to have arms mm. at the polling unit, yeah. but the thugs have, have guns. So they have to run for their lives in 2019. But that's, a, that's an aspect there. The thugs have arms, but the policemen were not yeah, armed. Exactly. In 2019, that's what we're facing in Nigeria. And my call has always been to the citizenry, the people of Nigeria, we must take our destiny in our hands. This set of leaders or rulers, as I call them, they're not leaders. They're rulers because they enforce themselves on, ourselves, on, the, on the people. They're being forced. Mm. Like he said... If Belo did not, they, because they are now, they are appealing to Belo now to perform in the second term. <laughs> if it is perceived that he did not perform in the first four years, 
Why give him the second term? Mm -hmm. And then before the election, we saw a governor, a sitting governor of another state, come to the people of Kogi State and knelt down to beg them to forgive Belo. He just tells us the kind of people we have mm -hmm. directing the affairs of this country. There's so That's much emotions at play. It's selfishness. It is self. It is interest. We don't have democracy in Nigeria. I was telling you before we came on here. We have conspired God federalism or dictatorship. That's unfortunate. That, that is what we have. There. Okay, look at what happened in Bayelsa. Let me take, take away now. In Bayelsa, there's no, there, there, there's no report of much um, violence. Breakdown of law and order. But we saw a systematic decay problem. Jonathan, the former president of the, of the country, a few weeks before this election, visited Asorok. And he said it was a personal visit. But we now saw what happened because the, the candidate of his party, PDP, was not his choice. He galvanized his ammunition. Are you attributing the visit to something? Well, to... I'm, I'm entitled to my opinion. Well, uh, I mean, we just need to be clear. Yeah, yeah, that's, my, that's, that's my perception. That's okay, what I feel. It's only a perception. Yeah, that's, that's what I feel. Because if you cannot tell us what we went there to do, and after just coming from there, we're seeing what happened. You're not in a, a, a agreement with Dixon, and then you now galvanize your ammunitions, your support for the opposition party. It tells us that we don't have democracy. I've always said it. APC, PDP, they're the same. Huh. We don't have politics of, poly, uh, of um, uh, ideology, no principle. It is absolute and nonsense. The people need to stand up for themselves. Well, we hope to, we hope to get to that point where we're able to speak for ourselves and make the right decision. We cannot wait any longer. And have a democracy. 2023 is it's just, just by the corner. Exactly. I hear you. Okay, so let's we'll move on from that yeah. story. Um, Lion in Lagos, uh, what do you guys... I mean, when I saw it, I was wondering, why do we, first you know, of all, keep the, the, wild animal? The question all. I even asked was, how did you get a lion yeah, true. into your own? So was it through porous borders, most likely? Was it through the airport? And number two is that... I mean, the foreigner has the audacity to break the law in our country. Well, that's not right, because it's even against the Animal Protection Yeah, so um, I, 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 think, I think it's something that... Um, should be taken very, very seriously. And I must mm -hmm. commend the um, law enforcement agencies, mm -hmm. you know, for moving, you know, swiftly sure. after they received the petition and, uh, you know, you know, taking out the zoo and then saying that um, the, the, the man in question... Oh, I hope they put be, a face to him and the name. Yeah, will be prosecuted mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I want to believe that he's most likely not the only one that is doing that. Yes, we've seen it on social media that... Some people, you know, they have the habit of keeping wild animals at home. Oh, Not in Nigeria, know. but, you know, we see some of, you know, especially in the Middle East, we see quite a number of those mm -hmm. things on social media. Um, however, not some of those people, the kind of setting they have is a bit different, at least from what we see, it's a bit different from what you have in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't even excuse it. But it for someone that is living in VI, a densely populated and, you know, residential mm -hmm. area, I, I think that is is just the, the 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 affront is you know is is it's just uh, it's just crazy. And it brings a big question to even our wildlife because if we have proper laws, we have an animal protection act. Yes, this shouldn't happen. Like you said, how did it get the? Yeah, that, I, 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 into... like I always say, let's look for the root cause. Mm -hmm. How. How did that lion get? And I think he has had it for two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. so, it's about yeah, two years. So how, how did it get through, you know, immigration? Uh, it was said that it was brought in from Cameroon. Was it brought in through the land borders? And all? I think those are the things we really, really Pertinent need to look, questions there. Uh, look mm -hmm. at. So that, you know, we don't have a repeat or we can stop it from happening again or, you know, um, find, find a way to, like, nip it in the bud. Mm -hmm. quick. They face the law, as they said there. Okay, yeah. so, sorry, we'll move on. No, <laughs> we'll, move on. We <laughs> we'll move on to another story. So, which other story? It's, uh, uh, Nigerians have punished Sarah Key, that's according to Oshomade, and presidency attacks PDP for denouncing elections, and uh, something about uh, Adoke there, and lecturers going on strike, contention in varsity over SAC rumor. I think that's about what we have 
on the front page. Do you want to take any of them? And then we'll go. We'll I think we have some of those news again. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll move to uh, the so we'll move newspaper. to the other newspapers. Okay, we have the Nigerian Tribune. But before they get that ready, I think we'll take a look at the Vanguard newspaper uh, this morning. And again, uh, the Vanguard newspaper uh, border closure analysts see further inflationary pressure by year end, and that's on page 19. Uh, Benue permanent secretary. Pregnant wife, two children die in mysterious fire. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, petrol tanker kills eight in Kogi State. That's For really sure. sad. And that's on page six of the Vanguard newspaper. 801.5 million dollars uh, Malabo oil bribe. EFCC serves Adoke charges via Interpol. And that's on page nine of the Vanguard newspaper. On page salaries, again, Lautech lecturers down tools. Panic as Ekiti University moves to disengage 500 workers. That's a huge and that's on page 42. 18 killed in fresh attack on Zampara. This newspaper has got so many deaths, really. <laughs> and that's on page 7. Now, how APC clinched Kogi and by also states. Uh, the field interventions that gave victory to Leon Horse trading that played in Bellos favor. I won the election, says PDP Diri, what are heads for tribunal. INEC declares Kogi West Senatorial poll as inconclusive. That language again. And Buhari congratulates Bello Leon and tells opposition to go to court. Uh, well, now, um, Vanguard columnist Henry Boyo passes on. God rest him. And that's on page 10 there. How Sting Operation exposed anti graft agent demanding $20,000 bribe. That's according to Justice Oyewole on page 10. Hate speech commission bill. No going back on it, says Senator Abdullahi on page 8 of the Vanguard newspaper, and the federal government plans intervention to halt power plants shut down, and that's on page nine. And social media regulation, federal government not attempting to gag media, according to Lai Mohammed there, and that story is on page eight of the Vanguard newspaper. All right, I'll start with you, Dr. Femi. Which one? Well, I, I want to talk about um, the university, uh, mm -hmm. Ikiti State University, mm -hmm. Um, Down in their toes. So that's yeah. Lautec. Lautec yeah. is the one going oh, oh, on strike. Yeah, yeah Lautec is, is going on strike. On strike. Like, like, Lautec uh, will come He's back. He's right. AKT is yeah. uh, disengaging AKT, yeah, 500 yeah, workers. Disengaging 500. Mm. And I so which one are you taking first? AKT? AKT first. Okay. Um, I read the story mm -hmm. and there's been a, um, a new governing council. Okay. And what they found out is that the staff, they have over bloated staffing in the yeah. university. What does that mean? That means they have more too than many they people. Need. <laughs> <laughs> too many people. How did they realize what they need? Well, they, they are, they've accused the former VC to have overemployed people and to have even broken some academic protocols to mm, promote. To get some people. Oh, okay, to promotion. Promote lecturers to become professors without fulfilling the requirements. The requirements. That's serious. So they're saying now. Most of those people are going to be given mm -hmm. uh, um, sack letters or well, the ones who were promoted yeah, without due yeah, process, so yes, to speak. And the ones who the who are not needed in the system because their overhead, mm -hmm. as in cost of paying salaries, it must be cost, huge cost implications. It's moved. It's stated that it's moved has moved from three hundred something million monthly to five hundred something mm. million, so, or about two hundred million gap. And then the state government is only, the subvention they get from the state government is only about 260. Mm. So the university in itself has to source for funds. For funds. Mm. So it's a big problem. And it's painful because even in the citadel of knowledge, Just me, I can see the pain even the in The corruption your eyes. that goes on. And it's, it's, it's just that we are, I don't know the kind of people we are. I've, I've, you know, I, 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 I say it every time on this program there. You see, if you have a basket of 10 rotten tomatoes mm. or 9 rotten tomatoes, 9 out of 10 times you go to that basket, you're going to pick bad tomatoes. Mm. We have a people problem, first of all, mm. because you have someone uh, who you'd expect is very learned and mm. would, you know, have great would respect for his own reputation and mm. all of that, you know, has now been said to have broken the process in employing people, created an over bloated uh, system, and now there's a problem. Because what they have in their hand right now in Ikiti is that you're going to have to fight the public perception and potential 
crisis mm. of disengaging about 500 people. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Of, that's, that's a lot. That's Some a lot. organizations are not even up to you know, that number. You so. Know, and so, so again, it's, it's just a very sad story. That the challenge here is that every one of us must continue to strive to act in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Even Lautech, um, the, the problem in Lautech, again, is just a matter of the parties involved coming together and deciding what they want to do with their school. Because one of the major problems in Lautech is the ownership Lautech structure. Is yeah. It's mm -hmm. owned by two, two states. states who are not in the same financial position. Mm -hmm. You know, it so some, problem, yeah, right? it's a huge, very, very huge problem. Another thing that you know I think has to be done, and we have to look at for Nigerian universities to start to get to, you know, a stage where um, we because we have, we've never scratched the surface of competing with global um, um, education as it yeah. were today, is that we have to start to look at endowment funds. You know, mm. but with yeah. that, with 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 cases like what you described happening in Ekiti, mm -hmm. you know. It's very difficult for anybody to, you know, give money to schools. schools yeah. it's, it's very difficult. But we need the government alone, let's be sincere, government alone cannot completely fund education. You know, yeah. if you look at it globally, that's not how it works. Mm. So you need, you know, a very healthy collaboration between government and the private sector to be able to properly fund the organization. But there's no company that will be happy to give you know, money to a school, knowing that someone is going to sit down somewhere and dash the money out, and you're not going to be able to without achieve. Due process. Yeah, without, without due process, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, again, I just think that we, um, I mean, if the lecturers, if our, our institution are having, you know, some of this problem that we see across, mm -hmm. you okay. know, um, our, our society, then we have to go back and find a way to solve this problem of leadership, which mm -hmm. is what I say. Because, I mean, even if you're the CEO of Most a company course. and you're starting to see that the, the cost of running the organization is becoming too much, the first thing you want to do is that you want to, you know, streamline everything and say, how can we reduce our yeah. OPEX, you know? Not constantly looking for opportunities, you know, to just give out the money. And I think one of the reasons why people do that is because we don't have a sense of ownership and we, yeah. we don't have a sense of ownership in the things that we do. We do. You know, I agree. It's, 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 it's very, very, very designing. And now Lautech is, the, 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 the lecturers justified or not, mm. you know, are going to owe the student of Lautech yeah. ransom again because they're not going to they release, oh, they're going to lose more now. They're yeah. not going to release the rainy semester um, results. They are not going to allow defense for oh, final year okay. students. That's really huge. Sure. You know, that's what I was thinking as you talk because the, again, the implication is going to be there will be more adverse effects on the students. Fortunately, they are the trying. To, they are trying to leverage because they know that with that, you know, a lot of people there's a, there's more at stake than mm -hmm. releasing the results, allowing the students to go on vacation and they don't have enough leverage to continue to fight for the payment of their salary or to, you know for for government to meet. Uh, the demand. That's quite unfortunate. Uh, thank you for that intervention. We'll move on to the Nigerian Tribune in the interest of time. We'll take just maybe one or one on this day and then right. uh, move on for today. So, um, uh, the front page again is the hate speech bill Fallon Odez uh, uh, National Assembly and the federal government to sue Buhari others and being demonized uh, sponsor cries out. That's on the front page of the Nigerian uh, Tribune. As you see there, we're not going to talk about Lautech. It's also there, um, but find that story on page 12. They begin strike over unpaid salaries, uh, it's usually the line. So please grab a copy of it and find out the details of that story. Be sensitive in your demands, Buhari tells Asu and Nasu on page 8. Those are in Oyo government it should wait till 2023. Hold on, guys. Mackin Day is saying. <laughs> and that's on page six. Uh, bandits attack Zampara community, kill 14 and injure 10 on page 34. Another issue of security there. Kogi election failed minimum standard of credible pool, according to MBA. Uh, as INEC declares Bello governor elect, Bielsa election results manipulated, according to Iaga. I won Bielsa poll, uh, Diri PDP candidate saying, uh, why we visited. Jonathan, according to the APC leaders, uh, page two and three, Bellos re-election, race well run, victory well won. I thought that was a, uh, that was a very creative statement. <laughs> I don't know the implication, but well. Uh, yes, and um, so which, let's just take one story here. Uh, the um, eight the speech. Um, the how eight did speech I know you were going to come to it? <laughs> <laughs> right, the eight speech bill. bill. And I, I must commend um, uh, Falano for, you know, coming out. And I think that every one of us in our own capacity and little way mm -hmm. was kick against the eight speech mm -hmm. bill. Um, I think the elements of the bill 
is taken it's care death of. death penalty. Yeah, some of it are already taken My. care of. And it looks like it's just a concerted effort to actually, you know, stop, create fear in the way people express mm -hmm. themselves. Because I feel that if you, we already have a part of our constitution that takes care of, you know, spreading false information false about hold. people, mm -hmm. you know, libel suits, you know, uh, and they're not strange to us. So the, the objective of the eight speech bill is is very is not you know is not clear except what we it seems like people are saying it is and I like you know the legal perspective that Falama has given but to this saying true. that even the NAS they don't really they have, don't have the authority, the authority constitutional power yeah to do the constitutional so. power to push this um, and I just really hope that the judiciary is allowed to do his work very well because. The judiary is also the, the, the <coughs> trust and the faith we have in our judiciary. Should system the judiciary also assert, you know, kind of assert themselves, you know, in this situation, so we can they can be yeah, seen as taking charge. So, someone has to take it to them, sure. you know, which is what Fanon finally is saying mm -hmm. that he's going to do. But I think that from what I've always known has happened in this country, if we push very hard this bill is going to stop if there's so much conversation yeah. about it. And like I always say, mm -hmm. just get there. It's, unfortunately, it's the truth. Just get the interest of the international community about it. And then you see that most of the time, the politicians will just sit up because oh. that's where they always like to travel. Unfortunately, to we're going to end it here. Dr. Fami, I know you have so many things to say, but I'll ask you to hold your thoughts. We'll do this again. We are out of time. Okay. We are literally out of time. And I want to say thank you, uh, thank you to Boson and thank you, Dr. Fami, even yeah. though I didn't allow you to express <laughs> everything. But thank you for thank coming. You. And this is where we're going to call it a wrap for of the press. We'll do this again tomorrow, same time, 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa on the show of the press. And I am Mama Kaoko. You have yourselves a great day.